uh, oh, so like cool. Cinderella, Snow White, you know, fairy tales. And mm-hmm. my dad does that every year and dresses up as as the dame, which is a woman. So since I was a baby, I've been seeing my dad it dressed as, as a woman. So it's like. <laughs> this is about you and your journey in music. And of course, talking about the, the new EP coming out and the new video and song. So, yeah. Sweet. Um, first off, we always start born and raised. Where were you born and raised? I was born and raised in West London, West okay. London forever. West London, um, are, you, are you still in West London? I'm still in West London. I've never moved. I'm never going to move. Um, I literally always just stay here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really venture out of this like bubble that I'm in. Um, but yeah, that's where I, that's where I grew up. Well, tell me a little bit about that. I, I don't know much about London, especially West London. What part of, is that more of the city? Are you more on the outskirts, like a suburb? Tell me about where um, you're at. No, it's more like, it's very central. Okay. Um, so like say central's here, West is like the closest to kind of like Soho and Oxford Circus. And, um, but a place, I live in a place called Notting Hill, which is, yeah, it's just like the, the pinnacle of, of West London, I guess. Okay. I've heard of Notting, uh, Notting Hill. So uh, again, like but I'm, yes, I'm not very well traveled <laughs> as most of us. Where are you Americans. from? Where are you now? Uh, I'm originally from San Diego, uh, California, just south, south of LA. And then I moved, my family and I just moved to Nashville, Tennessee. So nice. I spoke to someone yesterday that was also in Nashville. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, like I'm a California kid, born and raised there. I lived there pretty, I mean, my whole life up until about a year mm-hmm. ago. Uh, so it's definitely a change <laughs> coming out to the south. Yeah, is it really different? I bet. Oh yeah, it's different, but I love it. The pace of living here and uh, just the weather having actual seasons and it's it's really cool. My kids love it here. So. Yeah, not just sun all the time like LA. Yeah, sun or just overcast, like cloudy constantly. But yeah, um, <laughs> but we do, we do have colder really weather. Want to go to Nashville. It's awesome. I'm out there. Well, I've heard the most amazing things about it. It's it is it is so cool here. We we do love it. But um, I I read that you come from a very very artistic musical household. Uh, talk to me about that a little bit. Um, yeah, I do. So my my parents, um, they're both in the industry, but kind of like different sides of it. I guess my dad mm-hmm. um, is very musical. He does a lot of shows. Um, on stage um he's a comedian he's an impressionist oh that's Um, cool yeah very cool my mom my mom used to be a dancer Mm -hmm. um and a singer as well and she now works in corporate hospitality so she does like she goes on tour with artists and kind of does like their vip kind of backstage thing so she she's always in that like you know thing but she she knows everything there is to know about music and the industry and everything she's just kind of learned about it as she's gone along um and then my brother he is a producer and a songwriter um who's yeah he's killing it he's doing really Mm -hmm. well he just wrote dynamite for bts so yeah i saw that that's insane um, yeah so he's doing his thing and yeah i just grew up with with a really musical family and they're really supportive and i went to a stage school so i've just been kind of I just, that's all I grew up knowing, really. Mm -hmm. It's cool that you actually pursued the entertainment industry because I've talked to people or I've heard people, you know, that'll grow up in that type of environment and they just want nothing to do with it, right? It's like, oh, my parents do that. Like, I don't want anything to do with that. It must not be cool or whatever. I mean, thankfully, they've had really good um, experiences with their careers. So Mm -hmm. it was never like oh, I don't want her to do that because it's such a hard, you know, I mean, obviously it is really hard, but they, they have a very like, um, I guess, yeah, they've just had like a, they've both had good careers so they, and they're passionate about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think me and David, my brother, are really like anything else. So it was always just going to be that. <laughs> it was mm-hmm. always destined for, for us. That's super cool. I don't want to stay too long on, on your family because I want to talk about you, but I'm really curious. Uh, with your dad being a comedian and an impressionist, like was he always just like the life of of the party and the family gatherings, or yeah, was he more he like reserved? No, he really, okay. he really, actually, yeah, he is. I'm not even being biased. He is really genuinely one of the funniest people I've ever met. He's just like, 
full of life and he really is hilarious yeah he's not just like a comedian he really has got like funny bones you know yeah because you'll i've you know some comedians are very like introverted and then they go out on the stage and they kind of do their thing and then it's like back oh no in. he's not introverted at all <laughs> like, <laughs> he's the opposite he's a complete extrovert he's like the life of every room that's yeah. so cool that must have been cool growing up and kind of seeing that yeah it was and um, yeah it is it's amazing and my dad um my dad, you don't have this in, in the States, but we have a thing called pantomime. Do you know what it is? It's like a, mm -hmm. a like a musical, but it's like a Christmas musical, I guess. Uh, oh, it's like cool. Cinderella, Snow White, fairy tales. And mm -hmm. my dad does that every year and dresses up as as the dame, which is a woman. So since I was a baby, I've been seeing my dad it dressed as, as a woman. So it's like- That's awesome. Very, very um, interesting, but I love it. I'm used to it. I'm used to seeing my dad in a bra. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one more quick question on your brother. Is he older or younger than you? He's older. He's five, five years older than me. Okay. Did you look up to um, him as far as wanting to yeah, kind of follow in his footsteps a little bit? Massively. He, he, everything I say about my family always sounds like it's biased, but it really isn't because they are genuinely so like, they're all really talented, like really mm -hmm. talented people. Um, but my brother is like my, my idol. Like he works harder than anyone I've ever known ever. It's just mad to watch. Um, he's been, doing his thing for like 15 years you know he started playing drums and then he went and on tour and played guitar for a big um rapper and then he and then he started producing and songwriting and he was making I mean, we, me and him used to live together we don't anymore but when we were living at our parents house he would be making music way before I woke up and way after I went to bed I could just hear it from upstairs like he did not stop he did not stop Mm -hmm. And he's been through so much stuff and so many different managers and um, and labels and everything. And he's just never quit. Mm -hmm. And then he finally got his his big song with the Jonas Brothers. He did What a Man Got to Do. And then it just started to kind of domino effect from there. And then he did um, Dynamite with BTS. And now he's on to everyone i mean everyone's working with right him. now it's like he gets yeah, probably the call just, from everyone <laughs> yeah so it, it bodes very well for me having a, a brother that's such an amazing producer and amazing songwriter but he really is yeah he's my idol for sure yeah that's awesome do you have you ever worked with him yeah we work a lot we oh, work cool. a lot together he's worked quite a bit on the on this project that i have coming out um um we've worked together loads loads and loads yeah that is so cool. You're my only and, person I like working with it ever. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> obviously you've been vibing so high. Mm -hmm. I don't does he like push you? Yeah, he does. He does massively. Yeah, every every time I work with David, my my vocals are pushed, and my somehow my voice just always sounds better when I'm being recorded and working with David. Yeah, that's so cool. That is so cool. It's cool to have that that you have that uh, relationship with him as well. You know, I know. Yeah, yeah, he's my best friend. So it, it it's really good that we can get on and work and work well together as well. Because we might, you know, even though we're really close and we're both sing, we might not have worked well together. Thank God we mesh well. <laughs> sure, and you can probably uh, <laughs> be more brutally honest with each other, right? Instead oh, yeah. of kind of he's dancing around. <laughs> yeah, he's very, yeah, he's very brutally honest with me, and likewise with me and him as well. Right, so. that's and, cool. That is cool. Well, when did you start getting into music? um god i mean properly when i was about um 18 okay um i came out of college and went on tour with these um djs called bondax they were like an electronic duo kind of like r&b kind of thing mm -hmm. i went on tour with them on and off for like two years oh wow um yeah we did like australia and everywhere we went everywhere i went everywhere with them just singing their songs mm -hmm. and then after that I kind of came out and did my own thing and started writing on my own and then I featured on this song called all of uh, this song called Koala Last All Night mm -hmm. by this um, DJ called Oliver Heldens and then I kind of started getting into that kind of thing I was like featuring on a lot of songs and they were doing really well they were mm -hmm. killing it in the charts one of them went to number three in the in the UK charts which was amazing for me because wow. I was so young and I hadn't done anything yet. And then um, 
and then I just started writing on my own and I signed to my my first label who I was with for a bit didn't work out but I've just all yeah about 18 I started going on tour with with that those DJs but even before you even got those gigs as uh, touring with the DJs, were you going to school for music? I, know, I saw yeah, that you I went, went to an to art school. school. Yeah, I went to a stage school. Um, I was kind of more drama. Mm-hmm. Um, you could either do like a drama course or a dance course. And I, I did a drama course. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was the most amazing school. Like half the day was maths and English. And then we had lunch and half the day was dancing and singing. And so it was amazing. And then... I came out of there and went to college and I studied musical theatre and then I just kind of realised that my voice doesn't suit musical theatre. I love it. I'm really passionate about it, but my voice, you have to have a certain type of voice to be in musical theatre and mine just doesn't, doesn't fit. I was constantly being told by my teachers to sing less like a pop star and I was like, "Mm, I think I want to Sing, I'm going to lean into I think the I want to be a pop star instead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I went and then I, yeah, I left early because um, I didn't feel comfortable singing how they were trying to make me sing. So I went to a, um, a music college and just went there for a year. It was kind of not, you know, they didn't teach me much, but it was like really fun and very insightful. And you got to be with unbelievable musicians and you just got to do some really exciting things like at that, at that school. So yeah, I've had a, I've had a really good like journey sure. in that kind of getting to where I am now. How did you land the, the touring gear at 18? Um, so I, uh, we have a venue here in London called Shepherd's Bush Empire, which is quite iconic. I don't really know what it would, what I would compare it to in the States or, but it's just like a really iconic, amazing music venue. Okay. Um, and my my music college at the end we had a graduation where we would sing with our band that we kind of made ourselves um, and I sung at the graduation I sung and I'm telling you from dream girls <laughs> Jennifer Hudson yeah um, and I put my band together and I kind of went all out like everyone else was just doing like some keys and someone came on and sung with a guitar I went all out I got someone to <laughs> play horns for me I wow the whole shebang and I like wore this amazing me and my mum went shopping for this amazing outfit with this like white leather moment I went all out I was like you know it's my time um and the college kind of brought some people to watch and like industry people and mm-hmm. one of them was an, uh, my first manager Nick Worthington who is also a publisher and he published uh, the DJs that I went on tour with and he said they're looking for a singer so I kind of literally went straight out of college and straight on tour with these boys and they were performing to like 10 10,000 people so it was yeah mad wow wow Transit- to walk out to 10,000 yeah. people from probably not close to yeah. that <laughs> no nothing nothing that? close to that it was mad yeah it was mad and there wasn't pressure because I wasn't singing my own songs so oh. I didn't care if you know it was their songs so I didn't care if people didn't like the songs it wasn't my songs so mm-hmm. I just I, I just had the best time hands down to this point in my life best time of my life it was so fun wow so and you weren't fun. still weren't even nervous even going out there to that many people no I, I didn't feel summer. nervous just because I felt like I grew up performing all the time so I was always performing not mm-hmm. not to 10,000 people but but I was performing always it mm-hmm. it, it just comes like it's my favorite thing to do so it's more exciting rather than nerves I was sometimes okay. nervous festivals and stuff because you know you don't know what's going to go on in festivals right Sounds there's a lot of different variables scary. that could happen yeah yeah, yeah a For lot sure. could happen at festivals but yeah that's really cool that is really cool and then you said uh, you get back and you start kind of working on your own project yeah I started working on my own project I was with them for so long and it just felt like the right time to leave them Sing someone else's songs for that amount of time is is quite tedious when mm-hmm. you want to be a singer yourself. Um, so I came out and just started writing. I hadn't really written that much before. Um, I mean, my brother used to help me, and 
in fact my brother used to submit my stuff for me I, I didn't I didn't even do it myself when I was at school I just kind of said David can you write me a song and I'll sing it and say that I wrote it <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I used to do that but um but then I started writing and 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 then I just kind of came up with some cool stuff and I met some really cool people whilst I was on tour um, started writing with them and then we kind of became a little writing crew and I just wrote loads of songs and then I got signed and then um, and then I started releasing okay so you got you got signed before you put out that first EP I did I got signed before that first EP yeah I was signed for about two years before that um, but it wasn't it wasn't very it wasn't right it was not right mm -hmm. they, they, it was it was classic label artist clash, not really getting along in terms of music. Sure. Yeah. Um, but we left, I left them amicably and I still talk to my first day and that signed me all the time. I actually spoke to me yesterday. Um, and it's really nice because I learned loads. It wasn't, mm -hmm. I'm not really salty about it anymore. I was for a bit start, but um, you know, what can you do? It's a sure. stepping stone. Right, right. Well, with that first EP, was it how how did you feel about putting songs out as your own artist project? I mean, you had eyes on you. You were on a song that made it number three in the country, uh, and having all these people looking at you, and now you've got to present your own material. Yeah. What was the emotion like there? Um. Yeah. So I put out that first EP after I had left my first deal. Mm -hmm. So I kind of just um I went to LA and I just wrote there because I feel like I write my best music when I'm there just it's more inspiring for me and I feel like the producers and the writers just get my vibe a lot more than they mm -hmm. do here um so I just started writing and came up with um my song he's good which I think was like the first song I put out or like the first song I wrote off that project um and yeah putting it out it felt very liberating because I wasn't able to release R&B when I was with my label, which is what I initially wanted to do and was very mm -hmm. ex expressive about doing, but wasn't able to. So it felt very liberating being able to put out music independently and whatever I wanted, I didn't have anyone. The contrast from being with a label and being independent is so different because with a label, you're not really allowed to have a say. Mm -hmm. And then with, well, you are, but not in my case. And <laughs> <Right>. then you know, <laughs> depending on the when you're independent, yeah, when you're independent, you can just do whatever you want. So it was just liberating to put out a bunch of like super singy R&B, like slow jam songs that felt mm -hmm. like more like me than my previous stuff with them. So, yeah. And obviously it was, it was well received. I mean, just looking at the numbers on Spotify alone, I mean, it, yeah. millions of streams on each, on almost every single song. Yeah. It, it's good actually, because I had nothing with that EP. I had absolutely no budget. I had no, press i had no promo i literally i kind of just saw it as like a thing for me mm -hmm. i didn't really have any expectations for that project but people loved it and it opened a lot of doors um uh, like of people to work with and a lot of people like found me that hadn't found my music before um so yeah no it's amazing that it's done it's done numbers like that with nothing right like how were people just finding it off of just you know, stumbling upon it? Like, do you know what yeah, kind of got people's eyes on it? Oh, okay. Pretty much. Like I had, from being, from releasing stuff previously, I had a lot of like people that knew me as a person, like, mm -hmm. you know, like relationships that I had built. So I had a lot of people, you know, like a lot of favors, like people would post it. And thankfully I've got a lot of friends that are influencers on Instagram mm -hmm. and stuff. So it was being put out to a lot of people, but essentially I just completely did it on my own. That's amazing. Did you yeah. support the album or support the EP with a tour of, of your own? No, I mean, you I had didn't. done the big one. Oh, okay. I didn't, I've never done a tour myself. I did a few shows here and there. I actually did one in LA, which was like my favorite show I've ever done. Where um, was that at? It was at, Ooh. Oh my God, I can't, I can't remember the name. It was in West Hollywood and it was an amazing venue and I can't, I can't remember the name. If okay. I remember it, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. But, <laughs> it's um, okay. Yeah, it was really fun. And um, I did a few gigs here and there, but I just, um, I didn't have any budget and to go on tour with no budget is, is like 
virtually impossible. Right. You have to pay your band and rehearsals and da da da. So I never put together a tour, but it, I really wanted to. But I'm actually quite happy that I didn't because I don't think I would have liked to tour with those songs. I love those songs, but I just they they're not. It didn't feel like me. So I don't okay. know if I would have wanted to to tour with those songs. But I'm happy that they're out there. Just not maybe not. Right. Tour. Okay. And once that record was out there and you're doing some shows, like are, what, what happens after that? Do you go back and just continue to write more songs or how does, how do you bridge um, the gap between now and then? Yeah. I just started writing more. I just went and I was just writing loads. And then I can't even remember that, that whole thing feels like a blur to me that like time of my, okay. of my life. I think I just started writing more and just kind of coming up with like the next chapter i guess okay and did you were you where were you in the because that that record came out in 2018 from my knowledge i think so yeah okay so that would put you like uh what a couple a year and a half into when the world kind of closes down where were you when that all happened i was um actually i was in new york (laughs) and um i actually funnily enough was talking about this with my friend last night i had covid but didn't realize that I had it. I just thought I had flu. So I flew to London to LA with COVID. (laughs) It's not funny. It's not funny. I'm like, yeah, it's like one of those things. (laughs) It was one of the, I mean, I thought it was flu. Like I literally was on my, on my Instagram archive. Like, you know, when you can kind of look up from where you were this time last year on your stories or two years Mm -hmm. ago. And I was posting on my story being like, I feel like I've been hit by a truck. Like I feel so ill. And I remember I got to LA and everyone was wearing the masks and I was like, what the hell is going on? Like, I don't know what's going on. But then I got there and my boyfriend at the time was there and I gave it to him. I gave it to everyone I was with basically. And then I was fine for the whole trip. So I felt a bit bad about that. Right. Um, but what can I do? I thought it was flu. And then, yeah. And then but- I went to New York and then came home and then the world shut down. So when you were sick and, and traveling, it hadn't really been fully. It wasn't a thing. No, it was like, thing, yeah. think, it was just a thing. I think it was just heard about in China. I think that was literally like, no one really knew what it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was just kind of like being spoken about, like word of mouth, like, have you heard about COVID? And I was like, yeah. And it's like, not a thing. But I guess I had it. I had all the symptoms. I called my mom. I was like, I can't taste anything. <sighs> She was oh, wow. like, you probably have a cold. I was like, I don't have a cold. I, 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 I'm not, I don't have a cold. I couldn't taste the thing. I couldn't smell a thing. I, did, I just didn't know what it was. What it was, yeah. But I now, mean, now. <laughs> obviously, <laughs> now, <laughs> looking now back, I know like, what it oh, is. wait a minute. Yeah. Oh, wow, but, wow, yeah. wow. So I was in New York and then I literally got home and and then the world pretty much just locked down um, maybe like a week after I got back. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah, yeah. wow um yeah to... I managed, managed to um fit in a good writing trip just before so that was good <laughs> okay did you, did you work on like this new record that's coming out were you able to work on those songs then or yeah, like, when did I you re- start putting wrote, this record together yeah I wrote two of them while I was there or mm-hmm. I recorded one of them and wrote one of one of them when I was there so I managed to fit in yeah like two songs from the EP just just before um just before I got back um so yeah I think I'd started it one of the songs actually I wrote in 2019. One of the songs on the oh, really? 2019. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've been working yeah. on it for ages, for years. Mm-hmm. When, when you get back uh, t- to London, are you staying at your own place or are you back with your, like at your parents' house? Or are you with your brother at this point or is he? No, oh, yeah. His own I went thing? back to my mum's. Uh, me and my brother were living at my mum's still. And the first lockdown, we were just as a family, us four in mm-hmm. the house. Um, and we did not leave. I, it was, yeah, it was horrible. Like we literally did not leave the house. If we went to get food, my mom made me wear gloves and masks. Oh, yeah. and we'd bring everything back and wipe it all down with the, with the wipes and everything. <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was not a good. Time. Oh yeah. I, I was working. I, I, I've come from radio. I did radio for a long time, traditional radio. And I remember I was still having to go in because we were considered like a essential business. So sure. we had this like yeah. CDC car, like it was bizarre. I had to keep this thing in my car in case I got bizarre. pulled over. Uh, mm. But like I would go into to work and we had these schedules where like basically there was only one or two people in the whole building at a time, but I'd have to come home, 
And my wife would make me like change in the garage and then like yeah, yeah, run yeah. upstairs and jump like in the shower as fast as I could. Yeah, I remember the, <laughs> the one time that I kind of broke the rules with, you know, like I didn't leave the house, but the one time I broke the rules, I went to the Black Lives Matter march in, oh. um, in central London um and it was heaving with people and I was like oh, I imagine oh, what have I done but I just really felt strongly about going so I mm. went and then came home and yeah my mum made me strip uh, in the hallway yeah. she had the mask on she was like put the clothes in the washing I was like yeah yeah, yeah I'm doing it don't yeah, yeah, I'd have to throw everything in the in the washing machine and then just sprint into the Literally, shower. It was a scary time. I don't now now in hindsight looking back, I don't think we needed to be that crazy. Right. But at the time it was it was scary. Well, yeah, we nobody knew and they're yeah. like, you can live on plastic for nine yeah. years. And you're Literally, like, wait, what? <laughs> I thought it was a fake, I thought it was a fake thing for the longest time. I was like, everyone needs to just shut up and grow right. up. Yeah. And then it became real. And then people I know started getting it and getting really sick. And then unfortunately, someone, two people I know passed away. Older oh, my people. gosh. But and then I'd start taking it seriously. after oh, that. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, yeah. when on a lighter note, when you were home uh, with your family and your brother, were you working on the record? Like, did you no. get a chance to work with him at all? No. OK. No, no. I it was, was just like so unbelievably not inspired. Mm -hmm. at all like I was just completely like and then neither was my brother for a while so I thought mm -hmm. if David's not then there must be something far wrong if David's not making music mm -hmm. but then kind of like yeah going maybe like a month or two into it me and David started making music and then um and then I started to get a little bit more inspired when I guess I just started to I don't know get so bored I'd had to do something right uh, but yeah I didn't, I didn't really write at all for about uh, maybe like five months. I've heard this before from different artists saying like, you know, I couldn't even say inspired. I was either like glued to what's going on on the television or mm. I was uh, looking at the same, you know, walls yeah. for the, for the you know, I mean, months on end. Thank God we had unbelievable weather here. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Maybe God was like, you're being punished enough. So I'll give you yeah. some sun. But we had no one's amazing outside, weather. so it cleared up everything, right? Yeah, literally, yeah. So I uh I didn't even watch TV. I just kind of like I worked out loads. I was like, I became like an absolute workout freak. Mm -hmm. Um, and like started like cooking and then just we we bought a puppy. So I just oh, was so did we did you? What did you get? Well, it's we adopted a he's like a mutt, he's a a terrier mix of some sort some people think he's like part chihuahua and or part like oh, wiener cute. dog he's really small i mean he's all he's about you know 10 12 pounds but we oh, we adopted him in the very very beginning too like it was like maybe april and what was interesting about it is we when we did it like the lady we went through an, an agency and the lady shows up in a van like takes a dog out and she's kind of standing like 15 feet away from us <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, my kids are playing with the dog and we realized it'd be a, a good fit. And usually in those situations, it's like they have to come to your house a bunch of times and they want to yeah. make sure you're not like crazy. And yeah, yeah, they, yeah. this lady was just, my care. wife's like, yeah, like, okay, can we like, you know, would we just pay you now? And she's like, oh, you want him? We're like, yeah. And she's like, yeah, okay, let's go. And it was like, hey, no questions giving asked. Dogs away. Yeah, it was, it was interesting, but uh, we love him to death and he, he's the, he's the best thing that's happened to the family. We had to do that same thing. We drove for like, I don't know where we went. I don't know where we went, like maybe like an hour and a half out of London, uh -huh. pick them up. Um, and we had to, it was just nice getting out of the house, honestly, to like right. take a long drive. Um, but yeah, having the puppy was like, that made everything so much better. What, what type of dog did you get? He's a cockapoo, like a little teddy bear. Oh, I, I know what you're talking about. Very cool. Very, very cute. Sweet. Very sweet. <laughs> called Harry. So, he made the lockdown actually very quite easy because he sure. was just so cute and we were running after him and taking him on walks and whatever so yeah that was amazing good. amazing um well back to your ep the first song the first single is hate you mm -hmm. tell me about the single and why did you choose that one to go first um i don't know why i chose it to go first i, I mean it's my favorite it's my favorite song 
Okay. So I guess I had to do my favorite song first. Mm -hmm. Um, But I just, every one that I played that song to was just really like, I would play the EP to people and that was everyone's favorite. So I thought, let me just put everyone's favorite at the beginning. Um, But I, yeah, that's one of the ones that I recorded just before lockdown um, when I was in New York with Swag. Um, Oh, wow. Huge producer. Yeah. Yeah, with Swag, it was Swag, um, Jeff Giddy and Flip. Um, they had produced it and wrote it um, maybe like, I don't know, maybe like six months before. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, I, I write all of my songs, all of them, every single time. But this one, Swag played it to me and it had hers vocals on it, on the demo. Oh, wow. Sing a her, yeah. And I was like, wow, like, this is so amazing. I'm obsessed. Like, I wish this was my song type thing. Mm-hmm. And he was like, well, she, she, she's not using it. If you want to try it, if you want to record it. And I was like, hundred percent. So I learned <laughs> it, recorded it. And then was just, my manager then came in and was like, we need this song. And Swag was like, you can have this song. You can have it. So I was like, I awesome. <laughs> then I, yeah. So I recorded that one. And then, and then that was, that was the story with that. I just kind of, I just loved it that much mm-hmm. that I wanted it for myself which I never do I never take people's songs um right. but this one just resonated with me and it just felt really it felt like a Beyonce like kind of moment mm-hmm. that song feels like I can just imagine Beyonce singing that song and so I took That's it <laughs> very very cool and you put it you're, you're putting it out on on Valentine's Day is there any I- any reason behind that just happened to hand fall that way or no I, I just kind of obviously the song's called hate you and right Valentine's Day is the day of love <laughs> and I'm not soppy like that I don't really th- I just think it's a s- stupid day so I just thought why don't we celebrate hate on the day of love and call it a day <laughs> there you go there you go and then you did yeah. a video for it as well I got a chance to see yeah. very it was amazing tell me about the video thanks um yeah so the video came about last year that's when I thought of the idea and mm-hmm. then obviously COVID and all that sh- stupid stuff where you couldn't film and it just became very tricky so I put it on hold for a really long time but my initial idea was like um I wanted it to be like Jessica Rabbit kind of in that movie um what is it called um who framed Roger who Rabbit framed Jessica Rabbit yeah yeah where she's singing why don't you do right and she's in that cabaret club and all the guys are like drooling over her and she's just mm-hmm. like doesn't want to doesn't want to hear any of it so that was my <laughs> initial idea I kind of saw it um like that I kind of wanted it to be in a cla- in like a dark cabaret club with lots of like you know gross men and then I brought <laughs> it to um my creative director Betsy Johnson and she she's amazing and she her her style is very much her like you know when it's a Betsy Johnson shoot and I went to her for that reason because I wanted her dark kind of twisted vibes that she brings mm-hmm. um and she kind of came up with the idea of having like the men with like the demonic faces like the the having look, looking really gross and sweaty and mm-hmm. horrible and then she she did the styling and um this amazing um designer called Louise de Savia did my dress custom and we just kind of wanted that kind of like matrixy dark thrillery kind of vibe because I guess the song is quite dark you know it's mm-hmm. it's um quite a dark song and it doesn't feel like it would want like an upbeat vibe to the video so that's what we came up with together that's amazing it's an awesome video I had a chance to see it and uh, yeah, it's, I really, really like it. It's cool. I didn't, I didn't put together the Roger Rabbit thing until you said it. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. now, now yeah. it all makes sense now. <laughs> yeah, that was just my initial, like, you know, if you could see my mood boards, it was like, it was like, yeah, it was like red velvet and Jessica Rabbit and men in suits. And it was just, that was like the initial thing. And then Betsy mm-hmm. came and just kind of like elaborated it to be a bit right. more spooky, I guess. Sure. Sure. Would you say that uh, that song kind of sets a tone for the EP or not so much because all the other ones are are all you? Yes and no. Like that one sets a tone kind of because it was 
kind of the first song that I recorded that that made me change up the not change up my vibe but kind of like got me on a roll to like mm -hmm. writing some really cool stuff I never usually sing so low down like that I'm always really like showing off with my range and my vocals and I don't think that's necessary I feel like you don't need to do that all the time so it definitely opened doors to make my voice and my songs a little bit more cool and a little bit more chill rather than like always having to go Mariah Carey on it um but all of the songs are really different on the EP they're all very cohesive it's a really cohesive project and they all sound very much like me but every song is diff is really different like there's like a big pop one and then there's like a ballad with a guitar and some strings like they're just really it, there's like a song for every mood mm -hmm. on there and I feel like hate you is kind of like the most like low low but like um not low tempo like like a, the most chilled I guess okay the others are a little bit more in your face cool I, well, I can't sorry go ahead no, no, I'm just saying they're all kind of like in the same vein, but but not. Yeah, it, it all flow, it, it all makes sense together as a package, but they're all yeah. different in, yeah. in itself. I love that. Like That's I would nice. like to urge people to listen to it in order because I feel like it's like a nice like story to go down. It, it's not meant to be a story, but it does flow nicely if you listen to it in order. Mm -hmm. I like that because there's something to be said about records and listening to them in, in full. I've had this conversation before. Because it's kind of a singles game right now, right? You put out a single, yeah. let it breathe, then put out another mm -hmm. single, and then maybe you know, a little bit down the line, everything kind of comes together onto a record. Yeah. Not a lot of people are putting out full albums unless you're like Adele or you know Beyonce mm. or her or something. Uh, so exactly. I feel like that that uh, it's getting kind of lost that whole listening to something all the way through. And I think that's so awesome that you set up the record that way. Yeah, I mean, I would, I personally would never listen to an album on shuffle. I couldn't think of anything worse than listening to an album on shuffle. That to me is just rude, you know? It, right. It a lot of, it takes a lot of, um, a lot of time to um, put what songs you want in order. Yeah, like you're curating this thing for a reason, right? I yeah, mean, you're not you, just doing, I'll put that song there, that song there. It takes like a lot of time. I've changed it so many times. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's nice to have a project just because why not? I know, right. you know, like people write so much. I mean, I write so much and I have so much music. So why would I not just put out seven songs? I've got so many, I may as well just, otherwise they're just, I'm just the only one listening to them. So Right, I think that's so awesome. And like you just said, you spend time trying to curate this this record a certain way. Like you, Like you said, I put Hate You first for, this reason and i'm sure the mm. fifth song is there for whatever reason you know that worked and listening to it in different orders and trying to figure out exactly. okay this is the best way yeah exactly i feel like yeah it's it's important that you listen to it um that you listen to it in order i like that well i i can't oh, wait to hear the record in full and the song on valentine's day that's amazing the ep is you had to be there which is a yes. cool title. <laughs> Does that kind of describe the whole thing? I just love that saying. Like often I I I don't I I just often I tell whenever I tell a story, I tell it in like so much detail and like I do impressions like my dad and I'll do like the impression of the person that said it and I'll do the voices and then and then sometimes if it, mostly most of the time my stories or other people's stories do land and they mm -hmm. always have you know if they don't it's always like oh well you wouldn't get it yet to be there yeah I guess and i feel like there. music is like that you know like every song has like a proper story stuff that i have either lived or something that i've seen or a friend or something but you wouldn't get it or you might get it but you had to be there to truly get it so you have to be amazing <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well thank you so much kate for doing this i really really appreciate it thank you for having me i do have one more question for you i want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists um honestly i would say stay independent as long as humanly possible don't don't get enticed by major labels you know sticking their claws in 
always stay just stay independent until you have your solid solid sound because you can you have to work on your craft to get to a point where you would want a label to come in and help you know because mm -hmm. they're just they're just going to change it so just don't even bother with that shit um and always just you know stay to stay true to who you are if someone says i don't really think that sounds like you but you feel like it sounds like you fuck them keep doing it don't know if i can swear on this but of course you can you can say whatever you want yeah yeah can, you know just always always do you don't listen to anyone else unless it's you know critiques and someone helping you to do better but just stay in your lane don't Amazing. let anyone tell you different Bring me a bad word.